This is a series of questions that are really all trying to fit together. So the real question is part four. That's the real question. But obviously if all I gave you was that, you wouldn't even know where to begin. So I'm just trying to give you stepping stones, or the HSC is trying to give you stepping stones to help you get there. So it begins nice and easy. They ask you for a similarity proof, okay? Correct. So you can always recognize HSC sort of formatting. It looks like this. So I want you to have a look at the way that I've constructed my proof. This is, this is my, um, I'll leave it there. This is my similarity proof. Oh, sorry, a bit higher. There you go. So when you're going for similarity, um, there are often many ways that you can do similarity. In fact, the first time I did this question, um, I had a whole different approach to it. And I was like, why am I doing it this way? It's so much more of a pain. Um, I was actually looking at the sides, you know, there's isosceles triangles there. So you can, if you so choose, you can talk about the proportions of the sides being in the same proportion, uh, because, because they are. Um, however, that's a very inefficient and long-winded way to go about it. I realized about a halfway through the question, actually, I should just talk about angles, because you only need two angles. You only need a pair, and then you're done. That's equiangular, right? So you've got a common angle. Uh, this guy right here in the corner, this guy here, exists in both ABC and ACD, so you can see that as well. And then I only need one other angle. So you can see the way that I chose to do it. I noticed that CAD and ACD are in that small isosceles triangle up the top. But CAD is also, because it's that common angle, it's also in the big isosceles triangle. Do you know that? See there? So therefore, I can connect these two. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. I can connect these two angles here because they're both equal to CAD. And that's what I've done at this line here, okay? So, uh, sorry, I should move that up for you. So once I've got those two angles, I'm done. It's equiangular, okay? Now, I want to give you a bit of a, a, a trick. How many people got to part two? Hands up, who got to part two? Who got, did you, did anyone get part two out? Yes, no? Okay, that's right, well, good job. Let me, let me show you, they're really trying to help you out. They are really, really trying to help you out. Number one, even if you cannot, cannot get this, you can use this result to do the next thing, even if you can't prove it yourself, okay? But secondly, being that it is there, it's trying to give you a clue, okay? You just proved that ABC is similar to ACD. So you have this similarity up your sleeve, and part two is going to sort of lean into that similarity. How can you use it? I want you to look carefully at this line. Okay. Now what I'm about to do is not the answer, but it's a way that you can get some idea of how to get to the answer quicker. When you've got similar triangles, what can you say about the sides in similar triangles? Can you, can you say they're equal? You can't say they're equal, you can say they're in ratio or in proportion, right? So in other words, you're going to get something like this, uh, you know, random letters, P on Q equals R on S. That's a proportionality statement there. You've got the ratios, you can see them. So all that matters is you've just got to work out what P, Q, R and S should be and where they belong. Now can you see it's actually not that hard to reverse engineer out of this statement what P, Q, R and S should be. Do, do you see that? For instance, what is X? X is a side in a triangle, right? It's actually a pair of sides in triangles. Uh, and it's over here. Well that X squared probably came from an X being on the left hand side and an X being on the opposite denominator. Can you see that? Do you see, that would be the immediately previous line to writing x squared, because you would cross multiply. <laughs> In the same way, what do you think a squared plus a y comes from? What are the two bits that have gone together? You've got a, and then you've got a, a plus y, right? You need both of those. And look, here's a, there he is, and here is a plus y. Why? Can you see that? So which one corresponds to which? Um, where is, which side does x in, on the left hand side, say this guy, which one does that correspond to? Now I've actually given you a hand a little bit. Can you see this diagram on the right hand side? I've um, put some colors on here. I've, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Colors are a superpower because they help you sift out what's the important information and what are the relationships in the diagram. So can you see, I've drawn You've got the two red iso the equal sides, and then you've got the non-equal side, right? But this triangle corresponds to the bigger triangle, the ABC, right? Except for ABC, these are the equal sides, and this is the non-equal side. Do you see that? 
So therefore, if I add on to here, look, this guy is x, and this is a plus y over here. Do you agree? Those are both the blue sides, the non-equal ones. They're the ones that correspond. Does that make sense? And then you can fill that in. So this is the line that's in my head, or on the side of my working. It's not the answer, um, because you don't know this is true yet, because that's the question. But now at least I know where my brain is going. So I just need to work out which sides are which. So here's what my proof looks like. There you go, like that. Can you read it? So I know this is where I'm going to go. This is where I'm going to end up. Uh, clearly, a squared plus a y comes from having multiplied a plus y by a. And then you can see here is the line that I had written down earlier as my sort of reverse engineered way of thinking about the fact that they've given me a clue. I might as well use it. Don't feel guilty for using it. We gave it to you on purpose, so use it. The trickiest part is you've got to work out which side is x, because there are two x's, right? And uh, which side is a, because there are also two sides that are equal to a. So you just got to know which one's which. And just looking at your diagram carefully will tell you this is the order, OK? Um, don't forget your reasoning either. That's pretty important, OK? Now, I will come back to this, so, and you can take a picture and all that kind of thing in a minute. But just while I still have your attention, I again want you to look at the next line. And I want you to read the question carefully. Don't worry, I promise I'll come back to this and you can write it down. I'm being brain conscious, by the way. Um, I can show you the answer for part three. And you will not learn as much as if you think hard about part three before you see the answer. Because of course, once you see an answer, it's like seeing a puzzle that's been put together. You're like, oh, well, obviously that is what it is, right? How am I going to get to a statement about this from a statement about this. Have a look at the difference between part two and part three. There's lots in common, but there's one particular thing that's changed. What's the difference? OK, so the cos theta just kind of stands out. Where did, where did that come from, right? Not only has the cos theta appeared, but something has disappeared. Do you notice that? What's disappeared? The x squared is gone. Okay, so that's a signal to you. I need to get x squared in terms of some other stuff so I can substitute it away. So that the next line will no longer have x squared in it. Does that make sense? So have a look at this triangle. You can see my diagrams got pretty busy, which is just another reason why you should draw your own one. Have a look at x. How, how could you make a statement about x that has to do with theta? Uh, 